here as a sun, sun and sea destination, but to diversify products, attract a wide range of tourists with different interests, improve quality, ensure rational use of tourism development areas, and most importantly, encourage foreign investment. This is the first ever visit by the Secretary General of the UNWTO. The purpose of the visit, as you know, we have the honor to have the Secretary General of the United Nations World Tourism Organization visiting the Gambia for the first time. Mm -hmm. I think in the history of the UNWTO, the Secretary General have never visited the Gambia. This is a first, thanks to His Excellency's dynamic leadership and the conducive environment. Mm -hmm. And amongst our myths is also the consulate, our consulate general in Netherlands, um, Bart Pluskin, who is with 10 journalists who are here in the Gambia to expose the Gambia to the Netherlands um, um, community, to the people of Netherlands, because one of our problems in tourism is awareness. Mm -hmm. And we want the journalists themselves to expose themselves to the Gambia. It's like a product knowledge. Providing foreign journalists with first-hand information about the Gambia and its tourism potential, the minister believes, is a great and cheaper way of selling the good image of the country to the outside world, as well as encourage foreign investment. Well, it's going to help both tourism and trade, mm -hmm. because I always say that there's a thin line between tourism and trade. We've exposed them the, to the River Gambia. The River Gambia is our unique selling proposition. That is the only thing the Gambia have and nobody else have. Mm -hmm. So we expose them to the river to show them the island. In Sitanunku here, it is, it is sandwiched by two islands. You have the Dog Island and you have the Pelican Island. Mm -hmm. And we have over 100 islands along the River Gambia. It is our gem, mm -hmm. and this is what we want to also expose to the outside community. I sounded the opinion of the Secretary General on his impressions of the Gambia. And there have been two wonderful days. I think this has been the climax of uh, our uh, visit. It's a beautiful island and I understand now that there are many such islands along the, the river Gambia. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Gambia is probably one of the most attractive and distinguished destinations in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I say that for very clear reasons. Mm -hmm. One. It's probably one of the friendliest and most pleasant and welcoming destinations you could ever come to. Everybody in the street smiles and everybody welcomes you. Mm -hmm. That's very important mm -hmm. to make visitors feel at ease. Secondly, it has a beautiful weather. So you could visit the Gambia any time of the year. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, it's located in, uh, within reach of many, many continents around the world. Europe, America, mm -hmm. South America. Uh, fourthly, and most, uh, most important, is it has very distinct uh, natural uh, features. But what key areas of collaboration is the UNWTO looking at? We're cooperating on the level of promoting the Gambia, mm -hmm. make it known through our channels to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is to develop the products in, in uh, the Gambia, uh, the hospitality infrastructure and the other tourism attractions. Mm -hmm. And the third level is education and training. The visiting journalists for their part have seen quite a lot to write in their various columns. The smiling coast of Africa, uh, inviting you to be there, uh, welcoming, accommodating. Uh, one greatest asset that the Gambia has is the people. Uh, you know, we've gone across the board. There's always that true smile of the Gambia. The Gambia and everything has changed. Better roads, better, uh, more cars, more uh, infrastructure, everything. Mm -hmm. So I think in another five years time, it's going to be another country yet again because so much develops. Authorities in the hospitality industry are of the belief that initiatives like this one will go a long way in promoting the good image of the Gambia to the outside world and ensuring continuity is of high priority. For GRTS News, I am the Kumadema. The economic crimes trial of a former Gambia Ports Authority finance director, Jahu Jame, was all set to proceed today at the Special Criminal Division of the High Court. But the presiding judge had to adjourn the matter till February 22nd. The snark was caused by the day witnesses' late arrival at the courtroom. The prosecution witnesses were, however, admonished by Judge Emmanuel Nkaya to ensure that they appear on time for subsequent sittings. But despite the snark, state prosecutors filed amendment charges against the accused passing. Prosecutors accused Jahu Jame of causing the loss of over $6 million year to her former employer between January and December 2011. The accused has denied the charges preferred against her.
residents of the Combo North settlement of Kunkujan Ketaya Sunday guarded for a program that saw the inauguration of a newly constructed market and the laying of the foundation stones of two other projects. Abu Bakar Dabo was there and he now tells us more. A relatively new settlement engine studied towards a city status. The Baji Estate suburb of Kunkujan Ketaya is rejoicing over the spin of developments currently taking shape in their community. Founded and first inhabited by Pai Ibrahim Baji some 50 years ago, Bajia, as the word is sometimes called, has in recent years welcomed numerous landmark developments in the form of mosques, schools, and boreholes, to name a few, which are all single handedly pioneered and funded by Pa Baji. Among the most recent ones are the launching of this new market, which is named after Baby Maria Majame, and the laying of the foundation stones of a village garage and health facility. Settling back for a massive political rally after the launching and laying of the foundation stones, Babaji, who generously offered the lands for the developments, described the day as a moment of fulfillment for him after dreaming all his life to contribute such greatly to the lives of the ordinary people. He explained that he implemented all his projects at no cost to anyone, saying that since he has done his part, villagers, especially the youth, should stand up to ensure that the developments continue taking shape. He thanked President Jami and his government for the reigning peace in the country, thereby making development easy for Gambians to undertake. Sing Sing Tamba is the president of the World Development Committee. He and others like Amiru Balde and Alpha Sisi thanked Pa Bojang of KGI for annually organizing this rally for them as a way of strengthening partnership and party unity among them. They recognized the tremendous efforts of Pa Baji in bettering the lives of their community, saying the old man's quest is in response to the president's call for Gambians to play a meaningful role in nation building. Faru Tamba, who spoke on behalf of the women, highlighted the benefits the newly launched market will bring to the settlement, adding that before the market, people of the world suffer a lot to solve their basic needs. Her comments were further re-echoed by Usman Juf, the youth representative, who emphasized that Pa Baji is a stalwart of the ruling APRC, the party leading the cause for a better future for young people. The ward councillor Aja Mariama Bahsen and the representative of the paramount chief Al Haji Usman Gay heaped praises on the people of Kunkujan Ketaya for massively voting for President Jame in the November 24th presidential elections, saying that government is cognizant of the difficulties they face and is working tirelessly to remedy their situation. They urge the people of Bajia to remain strong behind the APRC and emulate the good works of Pa Baji in developing the community. Similar statements were re echoed by Moru Dahaba, the adopted father of the area, who described President Jame as a blessing and guidance for the Gambian people. Ansumana Jame, the man who officially inaugurated the new market, and Ajine Jata, national women mobilizer, all recognized the numerous development undertakings brought to Gambians by the Jame administration, adding that Gambians owe a lot to the government of the day. They implored the gathering, especially the youth, to emulate Pa Baji, who has asserted himself as a patriot and a true member of the APRC. They concluded by calling on the relevant authorities to underline the plight of the people of Bajia, saying that the world has an admired record of political support. The political rally that ran well into the night was occasionally marked by musical display by cultural groups in attendance. Abu Bakr Dabo, GRTS. The management of Gambia Radio and Television Services informs the public, the media fraternity in particular, of the launching of the Independent Producers Association. All producers and filmmakers are hereby invited to a meeting on Thursday, 23rd February 2012 at the GRTS headquarters at, M at midday. Female producers are encouraged to attend. That takes us to our first break. We'll be back with news from outside the Gambia. <laughs> Welcome back. Voters in Senegal are bracing up for the forthcoming presidential election that pits incumbent Abdullah Wat against a host of opposition politicians. The weeks leading to the elections have been particularly violent, with riot police engaging opposition protesters across major cities and towns in the country. Meanwhile, prominent rapper and fierce critic of President Wat, Didier Awadi, recently told the city of Dakar 
in a new song titled Mamboy, our Islam's president was third term beat.